Welcome to AP Biology. Um, what I will try to do in notes is go over the things that are important from the various chapters that we're studying, the various concepts and, and activities that we do, so that you can um, hear my point of view on the, on the pertinent points of the things that we're studying about. We will do notes in class, but I will also prepare these as a way for you to work ahead or to keep up when you have to miss class for various reasons and so on. So what we're going to talk about to begin with is the fact that that biology is about uh, acquiring or doing research or observing things about life. Okay, And there are some overriding themes, and so first of all we're going to talk mostly about the themes of biology and, um, and about how things integrate together in biology. Um, and of course, one of the most basic themes, one of the most overriding themes of, in biology is evolution. Um, we know that an or organisms are adapted to their environment. The ones that survive are best adapted to their environment, and they pass on the characteristics that, they, that are, that are uh, most amenable to their um, survival to their offspring. The ghost plant, which is the picture on the, um, on the front of your textbook, is adapted to conserving water. It's in a group of plants called succulents and this is what helps this, these plants survive in the places that they live, whether it's the crevices of rock walls like the ghost plant does or whether it's in the desert like uh, other succulents like cacti do. The whole thing that has transformed life in on earth is that process of change that is evolution and so that's what we're gonna that's kind of one of the overriding themes of biology throughout the whole course. Um, biology, of course, is the scientific study of life, and scientists uh, that study biology or biologists are looking to answer various kinds of questions. A couple of examples are shown here. You know, how does this work this way? What kinds of things lead to the development of these kinds of characteristics? There's not really anything simple that you can define about life. Life is complex, and so um, a lot of times we have to recognize that something is living by recognizing the things that that organism does. Um, it's some things that our organisms are kind of surprising at times. Um, sponges, for instance, that don't seem like they should be much of an organism, but they really are. Various kinds of cells, slime molds, things like that, don't really have a lot that, that characterizes them as organisms. But they are, can, are organisms, and they do fit the characteristics of living things. Um, there are some characteristics that all living things have in common. Of course, they have some kind of order in the structure and their in their um, arrangement of their cells and the organs. They have they uh, have adaptations to their environment. That's evolutionary adaptation. They respond to their environment in var various ways. Whether it's a snake moving into the shade when it gets too hot, or onto the rocks to warm up when it's too cold, or um, the Venus flytrap here closing to capture an insect. All living things reproduce, of course, after their own kind. Uh, they grow and develop at some stage, from whether it's just from one cell to growing to produce more cells, or whether it is from one cell multiplying, multiple, becoming a multicellular organism. All living things process energy in various ways. Well, that's uh, talk to, talking about cellular respiration and photosynthesis as well as other ways that energy is processed, digestion and so forth. And then there's some kind of nervous system regulation, some kind of response uh, in terms of regulating cycles and, uh, and um, feedback mechanisms and things like that. And we'll talk about these various characteristics as we go through this year. Um, so there are various themes of the book that are going to make connections across different areas of biology. And so you need to make sure that you're understanding we're trying to figure out the interactions or the connections across different things. Biology is not studying just about cells or just about organs or just about how an organ system works. It's, it's about interactions and um, connections across different kinds of things. So make sure that you that you're, don't make the mistake of thinking that this is going to be a memorizing course. It is definitely not just memorizing. There's a lot of factual information you need to know, but we're more interested in you figuring out how to understand how things work together, understand the different components, and be able to put together parts that um, may not seem, uh, you know, we may have studied them at different times or may seem like they don't really have a whole lot of connection to each other, but they really do. 
that's really important for you to understand how to do. Learning something about these themes of biology will help us in organize that information and put some of these categories together to see how they work together. Um, another theme, uh, one of the themes is that we have these emergent properties that arise at each level in the hierarchy. We're talking about studying things from molecules to um, cells to organs, to organ systems, and all the way into ecosystems and the biosphere, of course. And so that's what we talk about with the biological organization. And so what we're going to be looking at is how, as you move from one part of that one level to another, there are new properties that emerge at each level in that hierarchy. So here we have, of course, atoms. We start off with the biosphere. Of course, the biosphere is all of Earth and everything, all the physical environment as well as the um, as all of the different um, um, Ecolo or biological environments. We have ecosystems, which include, of course, the non-living parts as well as the living parts, the communities within that ecosystem, the populations within the community, and organisms all the way down to organs and organ systems, tissues, cells, organelles, and down to the molecules and atoms. And so we'll be talking about a lot of these things. And again, understanding the various components and being able to put together information about the various components to understand the system as a whole is one of the main things we're trying to get across in this course. Uh, so emergent properties this is an important term, they result from the interaction of parts within the system and how they're arranged together. And they're going to characterize non-biological things as well as biological things. The example given here is about a bicycle. You can have all the pieces of it, of course, but it doesn't function as a bicycle until everything's put together in the correct way. And so that's when you put it together, the property of being able to ride the bicycle emerges at that point. Um, systems biology is the way we'll be looking at a lot of things. A system, of course, is a combination of components that work together to do something. And so we're going to be looking at various models for the behavior of the whole biological system. And so we'll be looking at, you know, posing questions about how these things work together. Um, of course, we can understand increasing carbon dioxide, but how is that making changes in the biosphere as a whole rather than just the individual um, ecosystems that the way we you normally kind of think about it. Another theme is that organisms interact with each other and with the physical environment. Okay, and so we've got to consider some of the non-living factors as well as the living ones. Um, and the interactions between the organisms are going to affect everything. The, the organisms are going to be affected by the interactions and the interactions are going to affect other organisms and the environment. Um, so there's lots of lots of interplay and um, influence that that these different organisms and their environments have on each other. So here we have an example. This is a picture from your book, of course, how the leaves leaves fall to the ground from the tea uh, tree and decompose to return minerals to the soil that are picked up by the tree to make more leaves. And so there's cycling of the chemical nu nutrients. Of course, we've got the energy passing through the environment from the sunlight to the trees, to the animals that eat the plant, to the plants, and then the um, fungi and bacteria that eat the decaying animals, okay? We're talking about the cycling of nutrients like carbon dioxide and oxygen, okay? And so all of these things work together to change each other in various ways depending on what system we're talking about at the time. Another thing, uh, another theme of biology is that energy transfer and transformation of energy and matter uh, are important and are required by life. Okay, and so we've got to we've got to be able to use the energy to carry out activities. We have to be able to get the energy from the source. We have to have a way to convert the energy <coughs> from one form to another uh, as we move through the organism and through the ecosystem as a whole. Remember, energy flows through an ecosystem while matter is recycled within the ecosystem. Energy flows through it, entering as light, exiting as heat. Uh, this shows the example of the sunlight, of course, and uh, the chemical energy being converted to chemical energy, and that chemical energy can be converted into mechanical energy in forms for movement, and then, of course, to heat as, uh, as the um, energy is used to do work. Um, another theme of biology is that structure and function are correlated. 
this is important. Okay, the structure of something is not irrelevant to its function. There's a there's a an interaction there that's very very important to understand. Um, you probably haven't thought about that too much about the leaf being thin and flat, but the reason for it is it maximizes the capture of light. Now you probably know of some plants that don't have thin and flat leaves, things like an aloe vera. That one's also going to be its function is also going to be re to retain water inside the plant, and so that's part of the reason for this shape of the of the cactus or the aloe vera. Um, there's a reason for the things looking like they look and being composed the way they are and they're correlated to the function of that particular structure. Uh, another theme is about the cell. A cell is the basic unit of structure and function. Of course, we talked about in your first biology course about the cell theory. We'll discuss it again briefly, but the cell theory is based on the cell being the unit of, the unit of structure and function. Uh, cells ha all cells have some things in common. They all have a membrane. They all have DNA as their genetic information. And then when we look at different kinds of cells, we begin to see some properties that emerge because of the differing structures of the cells. Okay? Eukaryotic cells are going to be bigger. They, they include these membrane-bound organelles, whereas prokaryotic cells are simpler and usually a whole lot smaller and don't <coughs> have the nucleus or other organelles. We see a picture here comparing relative sizes of the eukaryotic cell to the prokaryotic cell. Um, and this is, I'm not sure what cell this is supposed to be, it's just a generalized cell. Uh, this looks like it might be an E. coli, but the point is that the eukaryotic cell is going to be a lot bigger than the prokaryotic cell and it has much more specialized functions and structures that have specific functions inside the cell. And again, we'll discuss this as we talk more about the structure of the cell. Another theme is the continuity of life, and that's based on heritable information in the form of DNA. The DNA, of course, is another unifying thing here that all organisms have DNA, and the DNA uh, encodes genes that are the units of inheritance that transfer that information from the parents to the offspring. And the ability of cells to grow and divide is the basis of how this works both in single-celled organisms and multicellular organisms. Another theme is about feedback mechanisms. They, feedback mechanisms regulate the systems. Okay, this is really important. If you think about the example of the thermostat, remember you've got to have, you've got to have something turn something on to change this to, to change um, the conditions, and then when the conditions reach the optimum level, then it's something else turns it off. And so we have both positive feedback and negative feedback. Negative feedback, it means that as this product, whatever it happens to be, accumulates, then the process that makes it slows down and produces less of it. Positive feedback kind of works the opposite way. It means that as more of the product accumulates, the process speeds up and makes more. And it depends on what the particular system is as to which kind of feedback you're going to find. There, and there are some systems that have both negative and positive in different parts of the entire system. <clears throat> That's all we have today, so uh, stay tuned for the next installment. And be sure and take uh, comprehensive notes um, as you read the chapter and as you, as you listen to the videos. I'll also post some other videos that you can uh, use from time to time uh, to help uh, enhance your understanding.